So today I'd like to introduce you to the most popular of our 11 escorted group tours in Japan. This is a 17 day tour called Japan Uncovered, which in our view will show you the very best this country has to offer in a two week holiday. Starting in Osaka, the tour takes in the cultural highlights of Nara, Miyajima and Kyoto, then heads north to the Japanese Alps and uh, where we experience the beauty of the rural landscapes of Kanazawa, Takayama and Nagano before exploring the equally spectacular region around Mount Fuji and ending the tour at Tokyo, a capital city like no other. We travel mainly by coach, um, following the, the normal Wendy Wu policy of allowing 1.5 seats per passenger uh, and occasionally by bullet train as well, as I'll describe. The tour is escorted by a driver and a national guide whose job it is to take care of you and all the logistics of the tour from organising the excursions, the meals and everything else. The tour is fully inclusive, so you don't have to worry about paying extra for meals, for excursions or any of the many other activities included in the tour. We start in Osaka, Japan's third largest city with a reputation for its flamboyance, its fun-loving people, and most of all, for its food. The street food here is out of this world, with local specialities like okonomiyaki, a Japanese-style savory pancake made from shredded cabbage, green onion, and often added pork and other seafood fillings. From Osaka, we visit nearby Nara, the first recognized capital of Japan with no less than eight UNESCO listed historical sites. And also this place pictured here, Osaka Castle, built in 1583 in a lovely hilltop location overlooking the whole city of Osaka. The following day, we drive west to Himeji Castle. This castle is older still, it dates back to 1333. Of all the castles in Japan, this must be the most impressive for its size and for its beauty. Locally, it's known as the White Heron Castle, and the lines of the architecture, along with its painted white exterior, do make it feel as light as a bird taking off. On a more sombre note, we pause at Hiroshima to reflect on the devastation caused by the first atomic bomb in August 1945, but also to admire the way the city has since been rebuilt and now thrives as the leading city in southwestern Japan. From Hiroshima, we visit the nearby island of Miyajima and the lovely Itsukushima Shine Shrine with its very famous floating Tori Gate. Now, a highlight of any tour to Japan is to travel by bullet train at speeds of up to 320 kilometers an hour or 200 miles per hour. On this tour, we use the bullet train to reach Kyoto, the cultural heart of Japan. Kyoto was the capital city for over 1,000 years and still home to many of Japan's most iconic traditions, such as the custom of the geisha, the wearing of the kimono, and the very precise rituals of the tea ceremony. All of these we'll experience during our time in Kyoto. Kyoto is also home to the highest density of shrines and temples anywhere in Japan. For example, the stunning but minimalist Kinkakuji Temple, also known as the Golden Temple, set in its tranquil gardens and surrounded by water to show off the golden reflections. Perhaps the most spiritually evocative place we visit in Kyoto is the Fushimi Inari Shrine. It's in a beautiful setting with 10,000 vermilion, vermilion painted Tori gates. These gates represent the journey from the everyday world into the spiritual world. Driving north, we come to Kanazawa and visit Kenrokuen. This is one of the so-called three great gardens of Japan. These traditional Japanese gardens are designed very specifically to combine plants, rock and water to create simple and clean lines for the eye to enjoy, reflecting tranquility and peaceful contemplation. Next, we venture into the Japanese Alps, 
This is a mountainous belt that stretches right across Japan's main island, Honshu, from east to west. And we drive first to the town of Takayama, pausing along the way to explore this town pictured here, Shirakawagu, with its traditional 300-year-old thatched farmhouses. As you see from the picture, the pitch of the farmhouse roofs is very steep, and this is because this is one of the snowiest regions in the whole of Japan, where normally in a normal winter, they'd expect 10 meters of snowfall. We stay nearby at Takayama, a traditional mountain town with many of its Edo period buildings still built and still upright and still intact. And this area here, Takayama, is also famous for its beef. Um, it's said to be the best beef in Japan, possibly in the world. The cattle is reared in the local area in the pristine mountain wet meadows, and uh, for that reason, is, is absolutely delicious. And we'll definitely get a chance to try it. We also visit the nearby 16th century Matsumoto Castle. This is known as the Crow due to its very dark wooden exteriors. Now, this more rural region of Japan is also perfect for getting close to some of Japan's deep rooted traditions. We visit, for example, a miso house to learn about how to make miso paste, the staple ingredient in Japanese cuisine. We also go to a wasabi farm, pictured here, to learn about how wasabi is produced. Plus, we learn how to make washi paper in the traditional Japanese way, and we visit a samurai house to learn the culture and customs of the samurai. From Nagano, the city that hosted the 1998 Winter Olympics, we make a side trip to visit the Japanese macaques, best known as the snow monkeys at Yudanaka, bathing in their hot springs. These are the most northern dwelling of all the monkey species in the world and can only manage in these climates because of the thermal springs. These snow monkeys are famous for their intelligence. They've learned not only how to stay warm in the thermal waters, but also how to wash their food before eating it. And they sometimes even roll snowballs just for fun. From the Japanese Alps, we head south to Mount Fuji, Japan's highest mountain at 3,776 meters, this iconic mountain is intimately connected with so many aspects of Japan's history, its culture, and its identity. We spend a full day in the area with a cable car ride from Hakone and a boat trip on Lake Ashi, both with lovely views of the mountain and the surrounding landscapes. Finally, the tour ends at Tokyo with two full days to take in the best of the city. Few other places combine the ultra-modern and the ancient so effortlessly as Tokyo. We visit the 634 meter high Tokyo Skytree, the tallest tower in the world and the second tallest building in the world, with stunning views out across the city in all directions. We also walk over the iconic Shibuya crossing, symbol of modern Tokyo, and where up to 3,000 pedestrians can cross the road simultaneously. But there's time too to visit old Tokyo. For example, the Sensoji Temple, pictured here, which dates right back to the seventh century. This is the oldest and most sacred site in the city. 